I'd like you to talk a bit more about the Light Minds event because you're oh, doing yeah. a workshop there. Yeah, the Nudge and Festival, Nudge Ideas Festival in March, on March I, 30th, I think. And I think the, the design thinking is going to be more of a, a feature of that. So the talk I'm going to give, or the workshop rather, that I'm going to be running is um, Designing an Innovation Culture. And it's for um, the target audience for the workshop, if you like. Um, I mean, Like Minds attracts entrepreneurs, um, directors of companies, coaches. It attracts everybody concerned in innovation. So it, 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 it's got a social media aspect to it, hasn't it? They've, right. they've, they've always looked at how social media is going to affect organisations and businesses. Um, I don't know enough about it to know if that's a major focus for them, but I know that I've always really enjoyed the Like Minds Festival, um, the Like Minds Nudge Ideas Festivals, because they're quite vibrant. You're always meeting interesting people, um, and and I always learn something at least one, at least three or four things every time I've been. So it's always it's a nice atmosphere. I love it. Um, and in recent years, I've been very uh, delighted to be able to be giving workshops at, at, these, uh, at, at the Nudge Ideas Festival. So um, this year, um, the Designing and Innovation Culture, last year I talked about an innovation strategy. And so this year I've kind of slightly changed it to a culture because what we're finding more and more is that innovation at um, companies sometimes gets put in its own box, right? So you have, you have an organization of however many people, um, small or medium or large, and they have an innovation team which sits in their own kind of space and it's usually there's brightly colored furniture and a wall that they can scribble on, and that's where they are, and they innovate and they innovate, but sometimes, I'm not, you know, sometimes, that innovation doesn't translate to product or market, doesn't move out of the innovation team as effectively as we might want it to. And sometimes it's to do with the bottom line, and sometimes it's to do with the fact that that company doesn't have a culture that is a little bit more open to these creative new ideas, testing them out in, a, in, a, in real time, let's put it that way. Um, and so creating an innovation culture is hugely important for business resilience because you do need everybody to not be scared of change. You do need people to embrace at least testing something new, even if it's on a small scale or even a medium scale in some cases. Um, you need to be able to move with the times, you need to be able to stay relevant, you need to be able to stay resilient. So whether you're innovating a new product or you're innovating around producing something for a new market or an internal um, change in, in terms of how your employees, employee engagement, employee well-being, all of these things that are being brought in are all innovation strategy based basically you're, you're testing something out you're bringing something new and and we need to be less fearful of these new things um, most recently I've been in a lot of conversations around data security um, the number of data breaches is astronomical I don't know if you know this but apparently there's a data breach every 11 minutes or something like this around at the moment, I, I can't remember if that figure is global or, or the UK, but any whichever it is, it's astonishing. And so there's been a lot of innovation around, OK, well, how might we um, make ourselves a little bit more secure in terms of data breaches or data security? What do we need to know? What questions do we need to ask? What policies do we need to be putting in place? And there's a lot of fear around that. So what happens when you bring in a design thinking that involves a whole team is you're trying to lose the fear, you're trying to have everybody own a little piece of that puzzle so that they can all help to solve it. And it's sometimes very surprising where the ideas come from. That innovation team that is put in, a, in, in their own offices to try and innovate, they, without talking to the rest of the team, without talking to the rest of the company, without coming out and and exploring may not be may may not be the ones that are coming up with the best answers. Sometimes the ones that are coming up with the ideas that end up being implemented are people you would not have thought of as being creative. But they're sitting there, they're bright, they're intelligent, they're analytical, they're seeing what's going on and they think, well maybe we can solve it this way. But they don't speak up because nobody that culture isn't allowing them to speak up. 
And so with when you design an innovation culture, you're enabling people to present their ideas wherever they are in the company to solve whatever problem the company is facing. So it I'm I'm describing it quite openly, but obviously right. but obviously, you know, one when, when you're when you're working for example with with in your case, the problems are quite specific and so you you narrow down to okay, well you know, when we're canvassing opinions or when we're bringing people in or when we're trying to collaborate around solving the problem, what exactly is it? We're going back to the who. So who is that problem impacting? Um, who are the players? Who are the relevant parties? Let's try and bring them into a conversation around what the problem is, how we might solve that problem. And then you go back to the innovation team and say, these are our findings. This is our data. Let's now start narrowing down to what is feasible, viable and desirable for the company. And you move forward. OK. Well, that, that, that outlines systems... So not systems thinking, design, think, design thinking. In a systems perspective. In a systems perspective. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, th I think, I know, I know you've got to go ab about 11. Yes, so, I'm sorry. So, so I think we should just check the dates. So right. have, I, have I got this right? The, 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 the Youth Entrepreneurship Ecosystem Conference um, around who is uh, providing entrepreneurship training uh, in, as an ecosystem around Devon, large and small players alike. An ecosystem is made up of everybody. If the African savannah was only elephants, it wouldn't exist. So we d we're not only looking for the large players, we're looking for everybody concerned. So that's on the 14th of March in the morning. Um, um, and uh, you can find out more about it uh, by contacting us um, at um, let's go at vaultentrepreneurs.com. Um, let's go at vaultentrepreneurs.com. If you get all the E's correct, <laughs> you, you, you'll, you'll well, we'll, get to us. We'll, we'll put a link on Facebook as well on the Wild Show Facebook page. Brilliant, um, and uh, um, and and it's in. We're we're being supported by. Obviously, we're not doing this alone. Nothing happens with anybody on their own. We're all in collaboration with a large group of, of wonderful people. So the Youth Entrepreneurship Ecosystem Conference is in partnership with the University of Exeter Set Square team, the Devon County Council, two different arms of Devon County Council, the Royal Society for the Arts, um, uh, People Inclusive with Carolyn Hooker, um, and a whole bunch of other people who, um, who've been helping us along the way. Um, the second date you wanted me to mention was March 30th, the Lark Minds Nudge Ideas Festival. Please sign up. It's a brilliant way to kind of get very energised about um, entrepreneurship and innovation in, uh, in, in the local and regional area. And don't forget to sign up to my workshop. <laughs> my <laughs> no. name is Sao San Kuri. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's here at the, it's, it's at the Phoenix. For, for it's at the Phoenix, Phoenix yes. in the basement. I think we're, Chris and I are going to be at, at Bet on that day, unfortunately. Oh, what a shame. Unfortunately, it, cl it clashes. But I'm sure mm. there's going to be people from Phoenix who... who well, they should come Pay and say attention. hello to me. <laughs> to to what, what, go, what goes on. Brilliant. What goes on. Brilliant. So... Just to end on, would you would you introduce the, the, the Paul Simon track? My next song, right. So that's um, You Can Call Me Al. Um, again, it's one of my favourites. Um, I think it's, it's a classic favourite, really, for most people. But Paul Simon, I absolutely... So if we go slightly, kind of... 10 seconds. So, so David Bowie was an absolute magical person of reinvention and, and recreating himself in so many different ways and so many different genres over the space of his too short life. I, I couldn't wait to see what he would do next and, and that's what I miss about him. Paul Simon um, does the same um, and from his early days of his early music all the way through to the later years he's reinvented himself a lot of times that's creativity that's innovation and he brings people around with him and creates these new teams and new genres that are just absolutely magical you can call me Al is a song about himself and his journey in that reinvention of self Again, it's all about innovation. It's all about designing a new product around around his evolved self, and that's something that I 
you know, I've done a lot in my life. I've I've reinvented my career and what I do for a living many times. Um, and that 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 ethic of it's okay to evolve into something new. It's okay to try out something new. You'll be lost at the beginning, and then you'll find your way, and you'll do something good, as long as. A little bit, as we heard a little bit earlier, as long as your heart's in the right place, your intentions are for doing good and making good things happen, you can't lose. It's always a win-win between the people that you're impacting and how you yourself are growing. So it's an innovation. You can call me out as an innovation of self song to me, and, and I love it. Great. Okay. Well, look, thank, thank, thanks very much for coming, You're and uh, hope, thank hope you we'll for see, see, see again at some some point, and we'll no we'll doubt try and keep these ideas in in contact with each other. One thing I must along. one thing I must mention is I'm a trustee at the Phoenix, so this is oh. doubly wonderful for me because I'm a trustee at the Phoenix. Like mine's is happening at the Phoenix. I'm here in Phonic at the Phoenix, so it's all very cool. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, it will definitely continue yeah. in that case. <laughs> okay. Here it comes. <laughs>